I'm here at St. Stephen's Catholic Church in Portland, Oregon, and today is the third day in our novena to St. Joseph, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary and universal patron of the church, or patron of the universal church. Now, let's see, we continue the Miracle of the Mountain, the story of Brother Andre and the Shrine on Mount Royal by Alden Hatch written in 1959 and published by Hawthorne Books. Let us continue then with chapter four, entitled The Door. And I'll show you the illustration for this chapter. The Door. Question. What employment was assigned to the servant of God after he made his profession? Father Cousineau testified, after his profession, I know that the servant of God filled the function of porter at the College of Notre Dame du Sacre Coeur in Côte de Neige. It is reported that Brother Andre used to say, on my entrance into the community, they showed me the door, and I remained there for 40 years. At first, Brother Andre worked at the Hotel Bellevue, where he had started his novitiate, but the school was growing fast and the funds of Holy Cross were increasing. To accommodate the pupils, the congregation decided to build a, larger, a large college on what is now Queen Mary Road, facing the forested western slope of Mount Royal. It was as modern as the Hotel Bellevue was primitive. Capable of accommodating 200 pupils, it, was the last, it had the last word in central heating, and water and gas arrived there through iron conduits, while the appliances were as good as those in the greatest institutions. As Brother Andre watched the facade of cut stone being built and saw the slender spire set in place, it was as though he were watching the mansion of his daydream in America rising before his eyes. The college was ready for occupancy in the autumn of 1881. The whole establishment was then transferred from the Hotel Bellevue. Brother Andre moved into the little porter's cell which he occupied for almost 40 years. Since his presence there eventually made it the most famous Porter's Lodge in North America, one should observe it closely. It was a true cell, long and very narrow, with a disproportionately high ceiling. The trim was dark brown, varnished wood, and the walls were bare white plaster. Brother Andre decorated them with a small wooden crucifix and his little statue of St. Joseph, before which burned a lamp nourished by olive oil. One tall, narrow window looked out across a potato field at the steep, densely wooded side of Mount Royal. Brother Andre used to stand there looking up at the rugged crest and meditating on what a wonderful place it would be for a shrine to St. Joseph. The furniture of the cell consisted of a small wardrobe, a wooden chair, and a fat little roll-top desk on a chest of drawers. Along one wall was a cushioned bench, less than a foot wide, with a pillow at one end where the porter could perhaps snatch at a few moments sleep between midnight and matins. For this porter's job entailed a great deal more than opening the front door to visitors. The college was chronically undermanned, and every member of the staff worked at a dead run. Brother Andre was given a multitude of tasks. It was he who rang matins at five o'clock in the morning, then knocked on every door saying, Benedi Camus Domino, after morning devotion, which means let us bless the Lord. After morning devotions and breakfast, he cleaned the re reception room and three long corridors. He also ran errands to town and at noon went to the post office for the mail. Every Monday, he took the pupils' dirty laundry and a carriage to their respective homes and picked it up on Saturdays. In his spare time, he was the barber for all 200 boys. They paid him 15 sous a haircut with his superior's permission, and he carefully put the money in a little box for a purpose that was hardly formulated in his mind. Another duty was making the twisted tasseled cinctures for the brothers. He had a hard time with the tassels at first. They were badly designed. So he carved one out of wood and covered it with cloth and fringe. 
this was the standard tassel of the community for years. And all day long and part of the night he was answering the bell and going to find the members of the staff whom visitors or pupils wished to see. One pictures the eager little brother. He was hardly more than five feet tall, scampering madly through the corridors with his soutane and tassels flying as he searched breathlessly for the desired person. Monsieur Pichette testified. Brother Andre also helped the youngest children to get dressed and often took them for a walk. The children loved to go out with him. He told me that he had never lost a child en route. At night when he retired to his room, Monsieur Pichette continued, he used to repair his vestments. He did the same for his trousers and his slippers. As to his underclothes, he did not repair them for the good reason, as he told me, that he almost never wore any. He avowed to me that often he had no more than thrown himself on his bed when already the hour of rising had come. In spite of his zeal, Brother Andre was often in trouble those days. In 1880, his father, Father Augustine, oh wait, uh, in, uh, okay. In 1880, his beloved Father Gastineau had been replaced as superior by Father Auguste Louage. Father Louage was stormy by nature. He had a pudgy face, prominent eyes, and a very short temper. In truth, his work of running the college was enough to make a man irascible. What with obstreperous children, demanding parents, and an overworked staff. For some reason, the little porter seemed to get on his nerves, and he eased his tensions by constantly scolding him. The other religious used to call Brother Andre the lightning rod of the college because he receives the bolts of louage. Of this, Brother Osei, Coderre of the Holy Cross testified, Brother Andre certainly had his ordeals. I remember one time when he had gone as usual to get the mail, I had replaced him at the door that morning at his request. I left my post for a few moments, and during that time someone rang the bell. The Father Provincial, the Reverend Father Louage, descended from the second floor to answer the door. At that moment, Brother Andre returned with the mail. The Father Provincial angrily asked, Where were you, Brother André? The latter replied, I went to the post office. The Father Provincial said, Look, I am Provincial, Superior, and Bursar, and now it seems I must be Porter also. Very well, Brother André, kiss the floor. Brother, Brother André obeyed without a word. Brother André never mentioned this incident, probably because he thought no more about it. He took his vow of obedience very seriously, and if his superior ordered him to kiss the floor, kiss it he would. However, in view of his sense of humor, it is quite possible that his eyes twinkled as he did so. He tried all the harder to please Father Louage. One day he heard the superior say he wished there were a parterre in front of the college. Brother André said, very late in the evenings, I carried away many rocks, which I removed from the land each day in a short intervals between my different occupations. An amusing thing, I used two wheelbarrows to save time. I would rather push one a hundred yards and walk back to get the other, resting myself and reciting my rosary. Several times while I was still working, the cock's crowing reminded me that it was time to ring the awakening bell. It was during this time that Brother Andre formed the habit of eating alone. When the cause went to Rome, the devil's advocate objected that the servant of God did not live a good communal life in that he seldom ate with his confreres. This was true. When the others were at meals, Brother Andre had to stay at the door. So he took his meals on his desk in the porter's cell. Because his stomach still troubled him, his meals always, almost always consisted of a bowl of milk watered down in which he soaked a few pieces of bread. Brother Andre told many witnesses that he could not digest the food at the communal table. But when one of the brothers suggested that he ask for specially digestible food, he replied, I will not do that, for it might hurt the cook's feelings. Question, did the servant of God observe his religious duties at Notre Dame? Well, Brother Ose replied, During his life, Brother André had the reputation among his confreres of being a very good religious. And Father Cousineau testified, 
I can say that Brother Andre faithfully kept his obligation to our Lord, to the Holy Sacrament, and to the Sacred Heart. He observed equally faithfully the commandments of God and of the Church. He assisted regularly at Mass on Sunday and Holy Days of Obligation, confessed frequently, received communion every morning, and fasted on Friday. Furthermore, he fasted practically all his life, all the days. With his multifarious duties, Brother Andre worried that he had too little opportunity for religious exercises. He was forever trying to steal some time for prayer. In the morning after communal prayers, when the others had gone, he would remain in the chapel while the priest said Mass, kneeling on the pavement at the back near the door, at the back near the door, so he could run and answer his bell if, if it rang. Often he would beg a fellow religious to take the door for 15 minutes while he went to the chapel. And there he would kneel, meditating on the sufferings of the Savior or talking with St. Joseph. One of his confreres told of an occasion when he impatiently waited for Brother Andre to come back to his post. Finally, he went into the chapel where he found the porter kneeling happily at the entrance to the choir. Brother Andre, he said crossly, you have been at prayer for two hours. Surely that's enough. Brother Andre, looking completely bemused, said, Oh, is it that long? Please, let me have five minutes more. Brother Andre found that the best time to pray was late at night when all the community were in bed. There in the darkened nave, lit only by the wine-red glow of the oil lamps, burning before the sacred statues and the flickering votive candles, he would often pray the night away. On Wednesdays and Saturdays, which were the days he washed the floor of the parlor, he was especially tired. And once he asked a young priest to come to the chapel with him to wake me if I fall asleep at my prayers. The priest, much edified, agreed. But Brother Andre's prayers lasted so long that the weary priest told his colleagues, I'll never do that again. He also continued the penitences he had begun as a child, wearing an iron chain under his clothes. And late in his life, he confided that often during the winter nights, I would throw a pitcher of cold water over myself or go out in a somber corner of the yard back of the college and roll naked in the snow. But Brother Andre said that he practiced these mortifications to subdue the temptations of the devil. In fact, like many another holy man, he fought a running battle with the devil all his life. As witnesses to some of his encounters with Satan will presently testify. Of these, of course, these rigors, long days of incessant work and nights of prayer played havoc with Brother Andre's health. One Sunday, after an all-night session, he looked so bad that even a little boy could notice it. One of the pupils said anxiously, Brother Andre, how you have changed since yesterday. The little brother grinned at him and said, I am always careful to change every Sunday. If the pupils noticed his unhealthy appearances, if the pupils noticed his unhealthy appearance, his colleagues were seriously worried. They made him consult the college doctor, who said that he must do no more hard work for a while. The next day, a Wednesday, the physician found him down on his knees washing the parlor floor. Brother Andre smiled up at the doctor's horrified expression and said, If I die, the community will be disembarrassed of me. Then his colleagues thought of another plan to make him rest. They decided to lock the chapel up all n at night. They tell this story, and this is not sworn testimony, but it was believed in the community. The brother Andre opened the door, never noticing that it was locked. And there we have the end of chapter four. Well, we'll stop there for today and look forward to where this story is going to go. Well, join me tomorrow for day four in this Novena to St. Joseph and reflecting upon the life of St. Brother André Bessette, uh, the orat Oratory of St. Joseph in Montreal, and his devotion to St. Joseph. And uh, to join me now in the Novena Prayer, please click on the link below to watch the video with the Novena Prayer. Also, you can find a link below to print out the Novena Prayer and pray along with us. And don't miss a day of prayer with us.